So um, I don't think Mel needs much introduction. Uh, I think anyone who's interested in non-classical logic knows Mel's work really well. So um, over to you, Mel. Okay, thank you. Look, if it would save time on the questions, suppose we agree I don't answer them. Uh, anyway, uh, look, what I'll be, uh, actually it's a good day for a conference. I was talking with Graham earlier. We had some snow here this morning and Graham who was in Connecticut, uh, same thing, snow. So time is getting on. Um, okay, so what I'm going to be talking about today is a generalization of strict tolerant logic. Well, not A, but plural generalizations. Um, I'm, I will say a little about strict tolerant logic itself, but essentially two of the talks this afternoon, the, the two talks this afternoon, uh, will, will uh, have more to say about it. Uh, so uh, when by the end of the day, you'll understand what I was talking about. Um, the thing is strict tolerant logic began as a, a single logic, a, a, a kind of counterpart to classical logic. And my uh, contribution is to uh, establish that it's really one of a very large family, all of which have similar characteristics. So let me get the slides up here. All right, strict tolerant, tolerant strict. Uh, okay, so I'll begin by saying a little about uh, the original strict tolerant logic. It's been investigated uh, Quite extensively recently, and uh, it turns out to have a lot of uh, interesting features. Um, and as, as I said, mine is contribution is to show it's part of a larger family. Uh, the case has been made that strict tolerance shows it's harder to say what a logic is than we would have thought. Now, what, what does that mean? Strict tolerant logic and classical logic turn out to have the same consequence relation. And since the days of Tarski, it's, it's been common to identify a, a, a logic with its consequence relation for many purposes. Uh, that means that these two should be identified, but they can't be. Uh, well, okay, the, the next sentence, I guess. Uh, Uh, I, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little off uh, in a, the wrong order here. I should begin by saying what strict tolerant logic is. Uh, and the idea is to evaluate a consequence relation by holding the premises to stricter conditions than the, than the consequences. Now, there are some arguments for that. Uh, one, one plausible one is uh, when you're uh, working in physics, Presumably, you take uh, your theory to be, uh, you know, relativity theory or whatever, to be simply true, and the predictions it makes to be testable within uh, uh, a certain margin of error. So you're assuming the, the laws of your theory as truths, but the consequences uh, can be a little fuzzy. You don't have to be quite uh, exactly true in your measurements to say this is good. Uh, but the, the classical strict tolerant logic uses three truth values, uh, zero for false, one for true, and an intermediate truth value, which means it looks uh, uh, a bit like uh, Claney's uh, strong three-valued logic, and also a bit like Graham Priest's uh, logic of paradox, except uh, the uh, intuition of what the one half represents is different in the two. Uh, it's either a, a gap or a glut. Uh, that, that, that's important, actually. We'll come to that in a minute. Um, so evaluation okay, maps atomic formulas to these values, and it extends to propositional formulas in the usual way, interpret the and using uh, the greatest lower bound on that ordering, uh, or as the least upper bound, and negation using just reverse the ordering. Uh, so th this part of it for the Claney logic and uh, Graham Priest logic, uh, the, the two tables are exactly the same for both logics. Um, the difference is what you take as your designated set. Uh, Claney logic takes truth. 
uh, logic of paradox takes one half and true. And typically you're reading one half as uh, uh, overdefined a glut. So true or both true and false or something like that. You, you, but so the, the, the underlying structure is the same for both logics. They differ in their designated set of truth values. So think of uh, the Kleene version, exactly true, as a strictly designated set of truth values. And uh, the, the, the priest one half and one as a tolerantly designated set of truth values and use that to define a strict tolerant notion of consequence. So uh, I'll be waiting this evaluation validates a sequence that gamma right arrow delta is a sequence. So gamma and delta are finite sets of formulas. And today formulas are going to be built up using just and or and not. And I've told you how they're interpreted here. So evaluation validates gamma arrow delta in this strict tolerance sense, if uh, if the validate the evaluation validates all of the premise uh, formulas strictly, then it evaluates one of the consequent formulas tolerantly. So, if v of x belongs to the set of strict truth values for all the x's in gamma, v of y belongs to the tolerant truth values for at least one of the y's in delta. So loosely, you're saying if every member of gamma is strictly designated, then some member of delta is tolerantly designated. So you have two, two sets of designations. So this is what's called the logic ST. Um, and it has the same consequence relation as classical logic. Actually, uh, if you try formulating a tableau system for this, it's almost obvious. but. Uh, the semantic arguments turn out to be the ones that generalize. But the thing is, this is an important point. Despite the fact that the consequence relations are the same, they in no plausible way are, are the same logic. Uh, consider the cut rule. And this is the, the, the usual form of it. This is what's called locally valid in a logic. If uh, each valuation that validates the uh, premise sequence validates the consequence sequence. Uh, now, cut is locally valid in classical logic, but it's not locally valid in ST. So the two logics differ at consequence level, they differ, I agree at consequence level, they differ at the meta consequence level. Uh, yeah. Cut is not the only such example, but it's enough. But there's also a notion of global validity and cut is globally valid in ST. So whether you say they differ on cut, it's important to notice we're, we're talking local validity and not global validity. There's a lot more known about ST, but my point today is that the connection between ST and classical logic is far from the only case this happens in. Uh, there are lots of logics besides classical logic that have strict to uh, tolerant uh, alternatives. And essentially everything that's been worked out for strict tolerant logic and classical logic applies to every one of these examples. So it's an infinite set of many valued logics for which strict tolerant counterparts exist. And K3 and LP themselves have strict tolerant counterparts. And first degree entailment has a strict counter tolerant counterpart. So the familiar logics fall into this category. So, but many valued logics, I wanna be very careful here. So you have a space of truth values. You have a space, a, a subset of designated truth values. You have an interpretation for propositional connectives. You have evaluation respecting the interpretation. Again, gamma and delta are sets of formulas. And this is the general definition uh, for all many valued logics. If all of the uh, things in gamma are designated under your valuation, at least one of the things in delta is designated under your valuation. Uh, and validity just means every valuation value, uh, validates it. So this is very general and I wanna narrow it down to which bunch of uh, 
non-classic, of which bunch of uh, many valued logics I'm talking about. So I'll always assume the space of truth values is a bounded lattice. So that means you have a partial ordering. There's a smallest and a largest element and think of those as the analogs of truth and falsehood. And that's backward, it should be falsehood and truth. Uh, there's a meet operation, a greatest lower bound, a join operation, least upper bound. And I'll always use those to interpret uh, the and and the or of the language. Uh, and I want to, there to be a, well, roughly a De Morgan involution. Now that's a mapping from uh, the members of your lattice uh, to the members of your lattice that reverses the order and it's an involution. Um, and I'm only, I'll always use this to interpret negation. Uh, anyway, if, if the lattice were distributive, you'd say this was a De Morgan lattice or a De Morgan algebra. The, 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 the differences between those is not important here. And there are lots of De Morgan lattices, uh, but I don't actually need distributivity. Uh, and I, so I'm not gonna build it in, but I, I've, I've, I've checked around and apparently the only name for a De Morgan algebra that's not distributive is a non-distributive De Morgan algebra. Uh, and that sounds a little misleading because uh, you don't mean it's not distributive. You mean, just mean you don't care if it is. Uh, so uh, since there's no standard term, I'm introducing what I'm going to call the Morgan lattices. So I'm dropping the D to suggest I'm dropping distributivity. Uh, so Morgan lattice, so you've got a, 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 a bounded lattice. You've got what would be a, a, a Morgan, De Morgan involution on it, but you're not requiring distributivity. Uh, Mel, Francesco Paolo says sometimes they're called bounded involution lattices. Oh, I like the Morgan, it's, it's shorter. <laughs> it's also the name of a room and that helps. Um, okay. so. Uh, I'm going to take as my logics, uh, those that have Morgan lattices as the spaces of truth values. Uh, and then designated values. Uh, you don't want just a set, that needs to be some structure to it for what I'm doing. A standard generalization uh, of this truth in zero one is being a prime filter. So uh, a subset uh, of the lattice is a filter if uh, a meet is there, if and only if both of the components of the meet are there. Or an alternative thing, uh, the, the subset is closed under meet and it's upward closed, they're equivalent. The filter is prime if a disjunction is there just exactly when one of the disjuncts is there. So uh, for a couple of papers now, I've used the term logical Morgan algebra to be a combination of a Morgan algebra and a prime filter on it. And that's the set of designated truth values. Uh, so th those are the many valued logics I'm going to be using here. And one more caveat, uh, nothing that I say today uses the primeness that, that, that can be dropped, but all of the examples I'll show you have it. So uh, I'm calling a weak logical Morgan algebra one that where the designated values don't have to be prime, but that's, that's not significant today. Uh, so some examples, this is the uh, set of truth values for both K3 and LP that you saw earlier. Uh, this is the uh, uh, De Morgan involution. It, it just reverses the order. Uh, th this is the designated set for the Kleene logic and that's a prime filter in this uh, so this is K3, uh, same set of truth values. This is the designated set for LP, and this is a prime filter also. So both of these fall into that, uh, in the, into that grouping. This is uh, the uh, four-valued structure often used for first-degree entailment. Uh, the ordering is upward. Uh, the, you, to the left there, you see the De Morgan involution. It just, uh, it, it inverts things uh, in the up-down direction here. And this is the prime filter that's usually used. And uh, sometimes A and B are thought of as neither true nor false and both true and false. And so the, the prime filter is, 
exactly true or both true and false, but that plays no role with what I'm doing today. So this is the first degree entailment uh, structure, unit interval with a, a standard ordering. Uh, you have a meet and join there. Take as your involution, uh, reverse the ordering. Uh, this could be a prime filter from 0.8 to one, but the eight is arbitrary. Uh, anything that's upward closed here is, is going to be a, a prime filter. Uh, so you, you have these fuzzy logic examples and there are loads of others. Okay, so I said strict tolerant logic wasn't unique. In fact, all logics that are determined by logical Morgan algebras have the same consequence relation as some strict tolerant logics, but not logic, but they differ at the meta consequence level. So the strict tolerant case uh, is a, really a very broad, uh, part of a very broad family. I'll give you some uh, interesting examples in a few minutes. Uh, I also need to, to specify exactly how I'm formulating strict tolerant logics. So the underlying structure uh, will be a lattice of truth values, same as before with a bounded lattice, but there'll be a strict and a tolerant set of designated uh, truth values. And for the moment, you just have the set of truth values, a proper subset of uh, uh, tolerantly designated values and a proper subset of that of strictly designated values. You'll see some more conditions come in in a few minutes. So here's an example. Uh, this is uh, the, the Kleene logic that we saw before. Uh, and okay, so that's a straight uh, many valued logic and that's the designated one. Here's a six valued uh, strict tolerant logic. Now uh, the um, truth values I have labeled but think of the ordering as from bottom up. So the thing called zero one is the smallest element, the one zero is your largest element. Uh, and the, the circles there, uh, the larger circle is the tolerant truth values and the smaller circle is the strict truth values. Uh, the De Morgan involution here, this is where I'm using the labels, the involute of X, Y is Y, X. Um, so, that again amounts to uh, turning the order over. Oh, I see what the problem is. Uh, th there's, there must be a, a D sub T there, but your pictures are covering it. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, that's, I thought I, I missed something, I'm sorry. Okay, so you've got this many valued logic and this six valued strict tolerant logic, and these validate the same sequence. Here's a very rough sketch. I'm not going to tell you right now where this comes from, uh, but suppose you have a valuation in the many valued logic that does not validate uh, gamma arrow delta. Define a valuation in the six valued structure by, well, here's the definition. Uh, it maps an atomic formula to zero, to, to, sorry, if the, the atomic formula maps to zero in the many valued logic, map it to well, what's this, the smallest element uh, in the six valued one? If it maps to a half, map it to the half a half value and so, and so on. So this translates evaluation, the, the valuation in the three valued logic to the six valued strict tolerant logic. And one can show that uh, that invalidates uh, the same sequence. In the other direction, suppose you have a valuation in the strict tolerant logic that doesn't val validate gamma arrow delta, define a three valued valuation by, and this one is more complicated because you've got six cases to handle. And there are also some places where you have choices, but uh, take my word for it, this will not validate the thing in the three valued logic. So the two validate this, this, the, same, uh, the same sequence. Here's a second example. This time uh, it's uh, Graham Priest's uh, logic of paradox has the same lattice structure, but differs in the uh, uh, set of designated truth values. And here's the uh, six valued counterpart again. Whoop, sorry. Uh, you notice the lattice structure is the same. The lattice structure only depends on the lattice structure of the original many valued logic. What's different is the designated values. 
the the tolerantly designated ones are the ones in that big circle and the strict ones are the, the two things in the small circles. So it's a more complicated uh, set of designated values now. There's more structure to it. But again, th these validate the same thing. And exactly the translations that I just described uh, establish that here. What, where the difference lies is in what are the sets that are designated. Okay, so here's the general result, the, the, the proper statement of it. Um, well, I wish I could get your pictures out of there. Um, you can move the um, icons around. You can move the pictures, people's pictures and the various different screens. I, I believe that, but the trouble is for some reason, I can't see my cursor. Ah. Uh, let me just try for a moment, turning my mouse off and back on. I've had a similar issue though. I think it's something to do with slideshows like and, and screen sharing. I've definitely encountered this problem. I know exactly what you mean. Well, uh, all right, there, there doesn't seem to be anything I can do with it. I'm sorry. Um, uh, okay, so I, I'll, I'll go through this and with part of it covered up for me and I'll try and get it straight. So start off with a logic. Well, for what it's worth, I can see the whole screen. Yeah, I, I know you can, but I can't. Oh, okay. So, um, I'm relying on memory for part of this. So, okay, start with a logical Morgan algebra. L is your truth values, D is your designated set. There's, there's a, a, an algorithm for constructing a strict tolerance structure. Uh, okay, so you've got uh, a, a set of truth values I'm calling L star, a set of strictly designated values and a set of tolerantly designated values. And you notice, by the way, the set of strictly uh, designated, uh, well, I, no, I'll come back to that. Uh, so there's the strict tolerance structure. That and the original uh, many-valued logic validate the same sequence, differ at the meta-consequence level. Uh, and now the, the, the details, in the, uh, in the uh, strict tolerance structure, you have more truth values. You also have a tolerantly designated set of truth values. That structure itself is a logical Morgan algebra. The set of truth values in, your large, uh, in the larger structure properly extends the set of truth values you had originally, or another way of saying it, your uh, original set of truth values is isomorphic to a subset of the, uh, uh, the larger lattice. Um, and the, you notice the, uh, the uh, set of uh, uh, tolerant, sorry, strictly designated truth values is the same as your original set of designated truth values. That's, and your set of tolerantly designated truth values restricted to the original set of truth values is your original uh, set of designated truth values. So th it's a very tightly constructed uh, bunch of stuff here. Now, here's, here's an example. Okay. This is the one we saw before, and this is the corresponding Morgan algebra. Now, I've, I, the, I've set, up, set it up so the set of points in this Morgan algebra doesn't look like it extends uh, the uh, original Morgan algebra. But if you just look at the first components of the names, uh, the one on top, one, zero, the one in the middle, one, half, one, half, the one on the bottom, zero, one, that's isomorphic to uh, uh, the, the original Morgan algebra. So just think of it as these are those original points with, with different names for the time being. Uh, this was the prime filter originally. Uh, this is the prime filter here. And you notice if you restrict that to just the one zero part, that's the counterpart of the original prime filter. Uh, with uh, with uh, these two, which I had before, uh, you have the same algebraic structure uh, because that only depends on the original uh, algebra that you had. Um, so of course that's going to be the same. Uh, I guess I just I, I'm sorry, I, I already said that, so never mind that. 
Um, so the, the, a good deal of the uh, work here is what that algorithm is. How do you construct an interlaced by lattice? Uh, sorry, an interlaced, uh, boy, my apologies. Let me start that sentence over again. Uh, how you construct the uh, uh, strict tolerant uh, lattice structure. And what it involves is using bilattices, interlaced bilattices. This is more than I can go through today. But you take the original lattice, you form uh, what's called the bilattice product of that with itself. Uh, that will be a, a, a bilattice with a conflation. You use what's called the uh, uh, exact values of that to be uh, isomorphic to your original lattice. You use what's called the uh, anti-consistent values to be the uh, values of your new uh, structure. Obviously, you're not going to follow this by my saying it, and I'll give you some references uh, at the end of the talk. But the step from uh, many valued logics to strict tolerant logics involves this bilattice intermediate stage. And if you start it with the uh, with classical logic, what you get is the standard ST. So it's a generalization of what worked there. Um, and once you get all of this set up, the original ST, it's not just that the results carry over, but the arguments that are used, the semantic arguments carry over, but uh, not applied the way they originally were, but applied in this bilattice setting. So the arguments look a lot uh, like the original ones. What's new is the structure in which you're applying them. But as I say, I'll have to leave the details out here. It's more than I can do. Uh, I, I can say a little about, and this is very easy, uh, the, the, uh, your many valued logic and the strict tolerant counterpart agree at the consequence level, but they will always disagree at the meta consequence level. And that's actually quite easy to see. And it's again, the cut rule uh, that's locally valid in the many valued logic, but will not be locally valid in the strict to tolerant logic. Uh, okay, so um, why is it locally valid in your original many value logic? Uh, the contrapositive, this is a very easy argument. Suppose you have a counter model to the consequent. Uh, so uh, it, uh, the valuation maps all of the things in gamma to designated values and something in delta to a non-designated value. Uh, and then there's that A. Well, either it's designated or it's not. Um, if it's designated, then uh, in this uh, uh, sequence you see here, all of the things on the left are designated, but something on the right isn't. So that's not validated. If it's not designated in this sequence, all of the things on the left are designated, but nothing on the right is designated. You didn't designate anything in Delta and you're not designating A. So that sequence isn't valid. So, uh, sorry. So uh, in the, uh, the sequent here, if the consequent, if the thing below the line, sorry, isn't validated by some valuation, one of the things above the line isn't validated. So that's local validity here. <coughs> but what about the uh, strict tolerant one? Again, this is extremely easy. Uh, suppose, uh, you, suppose you pick a, a, a sequent that's not valid. Uh, and actually empty set, empty set arrow, empty set will always work. Uh, all of the things on the left are strictly, uh, val strictly uh, designated because there aren't any. And nothing on the right is strictly tolerantly designated because there isn't any. So this is, uh, this is strict tolerantly validated. Uh, so suppose V is something that doesn't validate this and take a, propositional letter that doesn't appear in gamma or delta. Um, redefine V on A so that A maps to a tolerantly uh, designated value that isn't strict. Well, uh, then V validates this because not everything on the left is des strictly designated. Uh, 
V validates this because something on the right is tolerantly designated. So you've got a situation where uh, V designate, uh, validates the two things on top, but not the thing underneath. So you have non-validity no matter what. Uh, and that, that's all I have to say for the moment about strict tolerant logics. There's also tolerant strict logics. Uh, <coughs> you use the same kind of structures as before. Set of truth values, tolerant val designated values, strict des designated values. But the inferences reverse the roles. So you have a notion of tolerant strict consequence. So V validates this in the tolerant strict sense, provided if V maps all of the things in gamma to tolerantly designated values, it maps something in delta to a strictly designated value. Uh, OK, remember, every logical Morgan algebra determines the same set of validities as some strict tolerance structure. The analog for tolerance strict is never the case. Uh, if you let P be atomic, P arrow V, P is valid over every logical Morgan algebra. If P is designated, then P is designated. But it's never valid in the tolerance strict sense. Uh, map T to a tolerant value that's not strict. So very easy. Uh, tolerance strict never coincides with uh, 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 one of these logical structures on validities. But uh, the uh, key notion is anti-validity. And Chris, are you going to talk more about that later today? No, I won't today, actually. OK. Well, the, I'll, I'll have a reference to uh, his paper uh, at the end here. Anti-validity is the key thing now instead of validity. Uh, gamma error delta is uh, anti-valid if every valuation fails to evaluate, that fails to validate it. That is, for every valuation, uh, the things in the antecedent are designated, but things in the consequent are non-designated. Uh, and similarly, over a, a strict tolerance structure, uh, a sequent is tolerant strict anti-valid if every valuation fails to validate it uh, in the tolerant strict sense. That is, everything in the antecedent is tolerantly designated, nothing in the consequent is strictly designated. Uh, okay, so each logical Morgan algebra uh, has uh, the same anti-validities as uh, not only some tolerant strict logic, but the same one that was co constructed before, the one that agrees with the original logic on the strict tolerant validities, uh, agrees with uh, uh, the original logic on the anti-validities in the tolerant strict sense. And ag again, the differences show up at the meta level. They agree at the, on at the on anti-validities at the basic level, but they differ at the meta level. And here's a rule they differ on. Uh, X arrow X uh, and empty set arrow empty set. This is uh, valid in every logical more, uh, sorry, anti-valid in every logical more algebra. Uh, that's very simple. Every valuation validates the thing above the line. Uh, because uh, if X is designated, X is designated, but doesn't validate the thing below the line. Everything on the left is designated, nothing on the right is designated. So uh, <coughs> every valuation validates the thing above the line here, does not validate the thing below the line. So this is anti-valid in every logical Morgan algebra. But if you look at the, a strict tolerance structure <coughs> and take X to be atomic here, uh, look at a valuation V that maps every mem uh, that maps X to a tolerant value, designated value that's not a strict designated value. Uh, that's not going to validate the thing above the line. So uh, it can't anti-validate this would have to validate the thing above the line and it, not the thing below the line. So 
Uh, so this doesn't validate the thing above the line. So it can't anti-validate this. So again, every logical Morgan algebra agrees with uh, a tolerant strict logic uh, on anti-validities, but not on not at the meta level. They, they disagree there. Uh, there. There is more material, and I'm just going to allude to it. Uh, so what follows is an illusion. Uh, so there are strict tolerant hierarchies. Uh, for the original strict tolerant and tolerant strict lo logics, a whole hierarchy has con been constructed. Roughly speaking, uh, you, uh, if you think about the original ST, you can think of it as being constructed from two three-valued logics, the Pliny one and the Priest one. Uh, they have the same underlying structure, but the uh, uh, designated sets are different. So you can think of it as you're, you're strictly designating in one lo three-valued logic and you're tolerantly designating in the other three-valued logic. So if you have two logics, many-valued logics that have the same carrier set, uh, you can think of that as defining a, a, a strict tolerant logic. You can think of it as defining a tolerant strict logic. Well, we now have two logics, strict tolerant and tolerant strict. Uh, use those as your two logics, because they have the same carriers, uh, to define a, 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 a super notion of strict tolerant and tolerant strict. Uh, something is strict tolerant if all the antecedents are validated in the strict tolerant, the original strict tolerant sense. None of the consequences are uh, validated in the tolerant strict sense, and so on. <clears throat> At each level, use those as your logics to define the next one. That's the hierarchy. Um, and it's been shown that as you get up, go up the hierarchy, you get logics that agree with, in the original case, that logics agree with, that agree with classical logic up to whatever level you stop at. Uh, so meta, meta, meta levels and so on, but differ at one more level. So what happens between the ground level and the meta level can be pushed upward as, as high as you like. Now, it turns out that, uh, okay, okay, there are also similar results about anti-validity. And it turns out all of that generalizes to the structures I'm showing you. Um, the, the strict tolerant hierarchy can be constructed in essentially, well, not essentially, in exactly the same way that worked for ST and TS. Uh, and with the same uh, consequences, and again, I'm not going to give the details, but they, they are, th there's actually no change in, the, in how the proof works. Uh, modal and first order cases. Um, it's known that the original strict tolerant treatment can be extended to a modal in the quantified setting, and that too generalizes. And I say it's almost covered by my work so far. I was, I was working with uh, uh, lattices, so you have a meet and join. You need to work with complete lattices now, so you have ways of interpreting quantifiers, for example. Uh, but all of that can be done. And again, essentially the same constructions and the same proofs that I was giving extend to these cases, the same broad family. It's just uh, that's still in the process of being written up. Okay. So that, that's the, the, the set of things that I, I have to present. Uh, it's, it's essentially that the original work is really part of a, a, a big family. I don't know how big, I don't know if you can extend it beyond, you know, sort of well-behaved many valued logics. I don't know if it's possible to take implication into account in any plausible way, but this is as far as it's gone and here's, uh, the okay, for if you want to do further reading, the original material on strict tolerant and tolerant strict. Uh, this is the uh, the reference journal of philosophical logic uh, this year. Uh, the strict tolerant tolerant strict hierarchy, uh, Chris, uh, and that's journal of philosophical logic um, a little later in the year, I guess. Uh, and my work 
uh, two places. This one hasn't appeared yet, uh, but uh, it's uh, in a book uh, honoring Arnon Averin, which I think is going to come out the beginning of 2021. And this one, which is available, uh, Journal of uh, Philosophical Logic. This is the most detailed uh, of the two approach, approaches. Uh, this is online available now, and the print version hasn't come out yet. So that's, uh, that's it. Thank you.